for those who can't see watching across the computer, we're a kind of smaller crowd. Oh, we got ski more coming in. It's great. Um, tonight we're going to have our Ash Wednesday service with a combination of the imposition of ashes and corporate confession with individual absolution. So here's the scoop. For those who are here, we'll do the uh, admonitions from the Ash Wednesday beginning and the litany for Ash Wednesday. And then we'll uh, do the admonitions for corporate confession. Uh, and then you'll be welcome to come forward, taking your times and socially distancing and all those sorts of fun things. And what I'll ask you, if you do come forward, when you come forward, I'll ask you uh, to let me know if you want ashes, uh, individual absolution, or both. And you don't need to feel like you have to come forward as it is. This is one of those optional sorts of things that isn't required by the word of the Lord. But I'm going to work into the sermon a bit of why we do what we do for Ash Wednesday. So uh, again, if you come forward, then when we hit that point, you'll see it in the bulletin. Uh, if you don't say anything, I'll assume you won't vote. And I'll just go ahead and do it that way. But um, I will mask up and I will, you know, do it at arm's length to, to keep you all safe. Um, so, yeah, I think that's as much introduction as we really need. Uh, unless there's questions before we start. Can't ask from home because I can't see the screen. Great. Well, then, let's begin with page one in our, our bulletins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters of our Lord Jesus Christ, on this day the church begins a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection. Our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. From ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, and humble repentance born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently in his word and draws from it life and hope. Let us pray that our dear Father in heaven, for the sake of his beloved Son, and in the power of his Holy Spirit, may richly bless this Lenten tide for us, so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. And I will ask you all to please rise. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have, have mercy. mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have, have mercy. mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have, have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, O Lord, to prosper the preaching of your word, to bless our prayer and meditation, to strengthen and preserve us in the true faith, and to give heart to our sorrow and strength to our repentance. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To draw all to yourself, to bless those who are instructed in the faith, to watch over and console the poor, the sick, the distressed, the lonely, the forsaken, the abandoned, and all who stand in need of our prayers. 
to give abundant blessing to all works of mercy, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to do the rest to the Lord. To turn our hearts to you, to turn the hearts of our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us to the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Amen. O God, you desire not the death of sinners, but rather that they turn from their wickedness and live. We implore you to have compassion on the frailty of our mortal nature, for we acknowledge that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Mercifully pardon our sins, that we may obtain the promises you have laid up for those who are repentant. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God am I exceeding joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. You may be seated. Beloved in the Lord, it is our intention to receive the Holy Supper of our Lord Jesus Christ throughout this Lenten season, in which he strengthens our faith by giving us his body to eat and his blood to drink. Therefore, it is proper that we diligently examine ourselves, as St. Paul urges us to do, for this sacrament has been instituted for the special comfort of those who are troubled because of their sin and who humbly confess their sins, fear God's wrath, and hunger and thirst for righteousness. But when we examine our hearts and consciences, we find nothing in us but sin and death, from which we are incapable of delivering ourselves. Therefore, our Lord Jesus Christ has had mercy on <coughs> us. For our benefit he became man, so that he might fulfill for us the whole will and law of God, and to deliver us, took upon himself our sin and the punishment we deserve, so that we may more confidently believe this and be strengthened in the faith and in holy living. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. It is as if he said, I became man, and all that I do and suffer is for your good. As a pledge of this, I give you my body to eat. In the same way also he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Again, it is as if he said, I have had mercy on you by taking into myself all your iniquities. I give myself into death, shedding my blood to obtain grace and forgiveness of sins, and to comfort and establish the New Testament, which gives forgiveness and everlasting salvation. As a pledge of this, I give you my blood to drink. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup, confidently believing this word and promise of Christ, dwells in Christ and Christ in him, and has eternal life. We should also do this in remembrance of him, showing his death, that he was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification, giving him our most heartfelt thanks, we take up our cross and follow him, and according to his commandment, love one another as he has loved us. For we are all one bread and one body, even as we are all partakers of this one bread and drink from the one cup. 
For just as the one cup is filled with wine of many grapes, and one bread is made from countless grains, so also we, being many, are one body in Christ. Because of him, we love one another, not only in word, but in deed and in truth. May the almighty and merciful God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by his Holy Spirit, accomplish this in us. Amen. Amen. Having heard the word of God, let us confess our sins to him, imploring him for the sake of his Son, Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Please rise. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe. You may be seated and you may make your way forward then to receive ashes and the absolution.
Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Go in peace. Amen. Please rise. We continue on page number eight in our bulletins with the verses. Now is the time for God's favor. shine 
blindness descend on us, that, with purified minds, we may sing your praises with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host, and may glorify you forever. Amen. We continue with the psalm. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out of my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. And cleanse me of my sin. For I know my transgressions. And my sin is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And renew a right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and uphold me with a willing spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise.
second chapter of the book of the prophet Joel, beginning at the 12th verse. Yet even now declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, consecrate the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, even nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests and ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. The Lord answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending to you grain, wine and oil and you will be satisfied and i will no more make you a reproach among the nations this is the word of the lord thanks be to god O oh, come let us fix our eyes on jesus the founder and perfecter of our faith before the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame and is seated at the right hand of the throne of god the epistle lesson is found recorded in St. Paul's second letter to the Church of Corinth, the fifth and sixth chapters. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Working together with him, then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says... In a favorable time I listened to you, and in a day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the favorable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, by great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold, we live. As punished, and yet not killed. As sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. As poor, yet making many rich. As having nothing, yet possessing everything. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel is found recorded in the Gospel of St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, 
Go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets. But now, in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. You may be seated for our hymn.
Lord Jesus said, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. It's funny because I know Pastor Dunbar, you've probably wrestled with this as well. That fine line between do we do ashes or do we not do ashes? Do we parade our righteousness out for the world to see by having the cross on our forehead? Or do we quickly wipe it off before we leave the building so that nobody knows? Where's that line between demonstrating our faith and putting on a show? It's, it really is a fine line for us. As Lutherans, we're used to cutting fine lines and fine distinctions in all the things we believe, teach, and confess. Yes, it's important that we got the cross on our forehead and upon our, uh, uh, the cross upon our forehead and ashes because we know that relates us right back to our baptism, where we are drowned with Christ in those waters. And where we rise again saying, Abba, Father. So as we see the dirt, the dust on our forehead in the shape of a cross, we know that there's another mark on that forehead of ours, the mark left in baptism, that marks us as those redeemed by Christ the crucified. So we can joyfully go to our uh, sinks at home or even in the car with our sleeves. We can wipe it off, but we can remember that there's still a mark there that God himself sees. Because he doesn't just look at the actions, he doesn't just look at the public display we put on, but he looks into the heart. That's part of the whole purpose of light, is to humble ourselves, to realize our sinfulness. Joel puts it perfectly. Brand your hearts, not your garments. You don't need to do these things, but these things are meant to help us. To remember whose we are, to remember what we are, to remember that we're sinners and that we desperately need this Savior who's promised to come. To remember that we cannot stand before God with our own works and think they are satisfactory to win us salvation. If anything, we should look at ourselves and see our sin and realize our desperate need for Him. That's Lent encapsulated in this time, these 40 days or 46 days, depending on your count, in these days where we're supposed to humble ourselves before him who's redeemed, who created us, who redeemed us, who makes us holy. And we don't look at each other's acts and say, well, you know, I thank you, Lord, I'm not like that Lydia. Because you should see what she does when nobody thinks she's looking. That's not the whole goal at all. Look at the gospel reading. Don't practice your righteousness before I'm giving you a hard time. Morning. You're just an example. I'll say Benjamin next time, okay? Timothy next time? Well, she's mad at me. That's why you don't use your kids in service, right? You don't demonstrate this activity before others in order to be praised by this world. You bear them naturally as fruits of the faith that you've been given. The faith that you've been given should bring you to your knees before a holy and righteous God to understand that you cannot of your own power or ability please him. Power or ability please him. But you must fall upon your knees knowing that upon that forgiveness that you've received, as you've knelt before the cross of Christ, as you've heard those words of absolution that you yourselves have been forgiven of all of the great transgressions of which you're guilty. The reason that the imposition of ashes and the individual absolution are brought together the way that they are is so that you can see that yes, you have sinned. Yes, you will die. But through the forgiveness of your sins you'll rise again. Glorified. Greater than you are here in this world. Greater than you are because your sin will be removed from you, because you will stand righteous before the throne of God, not of your own righteousness, but of that which has been given to you by Christ himself. This Lent should remind us 
that while it is that we are dust, and to dust we shall return, we're also redeemed by the one who got down upon his knees and breathed life into our first parents. The one who gave that kiss of life to Adam and Eve, well, to Adam, and subsequently took Eve from his side. The one who alone can make alive, make dead, and bring back to life. This God who is ours, this God who's called us as his own children. It's going to be a long season. I remember last Lent. It seems like it never ended. Seriously, it's been a long time. I looked at Lent starting today, and I'm like, didn't we just have that last year? We didn't even really have a whole lot of opportunity to be together in this place during that year's time. But what we can do, as we still get together, even if our numbers are sparse and fewer and further between, we can have that opportunity to humble ourselves before the Lord and pray that he creates in us the clean hearts that we prayed earlier. That we be righteous before him <coughs> because of the sake of his Son. That we go out and live lives that are in line with what we believe to be true. That we humble ourselves and that we don't think more awesomely of ourselves than we truly are. Is he alright? Do I need to beat him? It's Lent. No, seriously. Here on this Ash Wednesday we have the opportunity to realize and set the tone for what Lent will be in these next 40 days. A time of repentance, of humility, of placing the priority of our lives where they need to be, of that of a life of repentance, a life of forgiveness, a life of humility, and a life of joy in him who's made these things possible in us. We look to the cross of Christ and see not just the death he suffered for our sake, but the life he rose to on that third day. And we know that life is ours. We know that the joy is ours. We just need to, for just a short while, for just a short time, we need to see the darkness around us and pray, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. And we look forward to the upward call. And we'll see this play out in the next few weeks of Lent. We'll see our lessons all work together. We'll see the messages that will be brought together. We'll see the great joy that is ours. Because we'll be brought still again to the foot of that cross. And we'll know his salvation because we'll see that there is nothing we can bring. But that he's brought it all for our sakes. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please rise. And now the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us continue now with the Magnificat, which is on page 18 of our bulletin.
for all servants of the church and for all the people, let us pray to the Lord. servants for the government and those who protect us that they may be upheld and strengthened in every good deed let us pray to the Lord for those who work to bring peace justice health and protection in this and every place let us pray to the
glad we could all be together this evening to get Lent started correctly in word and uh, absolution. It's really a good time, Ash Wednesday, to put our priorities in order. I'm a big fan of this. And hopefully there's plenty of people watching as well that are starting off right with us. Uh, a few announcements. Please note that this upcoming Sunday, Jonah, our field worker, is both preaching and he is beginning a uh, series of adult Bible study on 1 Peter. Uh, from what I understand, people have been asking if there's anything in particular that they need to do beforehand to be ready for it. Now, my suggestion is read 1 Peter and uh, be ready to come with questions. Because uh, I think he is putting a lot of energy into this, and I think we need to support him as well as we can with uh, this particular topic. Uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to look forward to being able to sit on the table side and be taught. That's always a nice thing for pastors. It's kind of like sitting with your families in the pew. You don't get a whole lot of chances while you're doing this whole type of stuff. Being able to sit and participate in Bible study on the other side will be nice. So, again, pray for uh, Jonah as he prepares for Sunday's sermon and for Bible study. And his Bible study should take us through the entirety of Lent and possibly into uh, a week or two of Easter. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, the midweek services, the Wednesday midweek services after this will be all online. We'll, I'll record stuff and put up responsive prayer too, based on the theme that was in the newsletter. So, if you haven't picked up the newsletter and you want to see what the theme, hymns, and texts are, feel free to pick up the newsletter and take a look and see. And uh, each Wednesday night for the next five weeks, then we'll have uh, those midweek services posted and available for people to follow along, much like we have the morning devotions. The morning devotions continue every morning at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Facebook and YouTube uh, simultaneously. So there also is the opportunity. So yes, uh, Terry actually off of your suggestion, I got a YouTube channel set up so that you don't have to have a Facebook account to watch the stuff. And uh, we've gotten some good response from the YouTube side of things as well. So uh, all you've got to do is look for Messiah Luther in Wolverville and you should find our, our uh, page right there. Um, other than that, uh, I think Tim and I have been talking about this and we'll bring it up at the Board of Directors meeting on Monday night. Uh, we're probably going to still have in-person Holy Week services. And I'm thinking one service on Easter Sunday, doing a 9.30 service and uh, encouraging people to be here together having the Lord's Supper, not splitting up, you know, into two and possibly having ourselves uh, spread thin for those two services. So we'll probably just have one, but we'll see what the board has to say on Monday. Any other announcements before we go? Thank you to everyone who has been wishing Lydia well. Lydia, I've got a card in my office that somebody sent to you. She did have uh, some gum removed so that her molar can come through. But uh, you're on the mend, right, Lydia? Yeah, doing better, which is definitely so. Thank you for your prayers and your concern for her. It's, it's much appreciated. If there's nothing else, then please depart with the Lord's peace, and we'll see you all again.